Hey guys, and welcome back. My name is Sam. You can find me over at House Plus Plant on TikTok, Instagram, all those places. Um, today, I'm going to talk to you about string of plants. And I have a few different here that I want to talk about, but I have like a little, maybe a trick, secret, tip, something like that for keeping them nice and happy and full on top as well as just happy in general. So I feel like I do something a little bit different than what other people do when it comes to string of care, so I will get into that soon. But first, I'm going to talk about each individual plant and their care, and then we will get into my little trick. Also, before we get into it, if you guys could like and subscribe, that would help me so, so much in the whole YouTube algorithm. So I appreciate that so much if you go and do that real quick. All right, so getting into the plants, I have here, this is string of turtles. I've had this one for, a little over a year um, and it was hardly trailing when I first got it. This one sits in an east window and it is very happy in there. I did have it outside for a little bit this summer but um, I didn't leave it out there very long. I just brought it back inside and it was doing just as well. So I have it in this macrame hanger which is <laughs> kind of a nightmare if I ever want to repot it um, but it's doing well so far. So and with these because they are a type of peperomia you don't want to give them too much harsh direct light so like a south window could start to fade these little turtles so watch that if you're seeing a lot of fading you might want to move it back a little bit but east window has been great for mine next we have my variegated string of pearls now i do have a really big string of pearls slash string of tears basket pot whatever and i will put a little clip of that in here um, but it was just too big to even get down and too heavy to show you guys. So I'm just going to talk about this one for now. So this is my variegated string of pearls. Um, I've had this one for, this one is about six months old. I've had this since the summer, um, or not summer, since like February or something. So I don't know, a little over six months, maybe like more like nine months old is how long I've had it. And it did start as just two little um, pots in here. And so I planted two small ones together and it has grown to this so far. These are just so beautiful. I don't know if you guys can tell very well how variegated they are, but they're just so neat. I love this plant so much. No, it's just gonna stay blurry. <laughs> okay, so that's that one. And then I have my variegated string of hearts right here. And it's getting that nice pink um, because this one lives in a west window. Oh, and so does this one. These two both live in the west window right behind me on the shelves. You can see their bare spots. <laughs> That's where they go. So I have this variegated string of hearts. I also have the regular string of hearts or like the original or whatever that is hanging up right there. And I will show that as well. And then I also have a string of hearts silver glory. And that one is right back here too. So. I have quite a few different string of hearts and I've had quite a bit of experience with string of plants in general. And so I'm going to go over what I actually do that I have found helps a ton. To start, lighting is key. You need to make sure that light is hitting the top of the pot as much as possible. So if you have a pot like this, and if I were to set it up on that very top shelf, the top of the pot would not be getting any light. So I always make sure this one's down a bit so that it can get plenty of light on the top. If you have a smaller pot where they're kind of down in there a little bit and the light doesn't really get to hit those, I even will like tip it to face the sun a little bit, like to face the window so that so much light can get on the top. That is a huge thing for keeping the top full. If the top does not get light, those leaves will start to die off and it will go bald. So. With hanging plants in general, that's kind of like a good rule to follow. Make sure they're down low enough that they're still getting light. If you put them up on a shelf above a window and have them trailing down, over time, they're gonna start to lose those top leaves. So keep that in mind. Second thing is when it comes to, like I said, the peperomia, and I think that's really the only one. If you do notice fading, make sure you move it back a little bit. Otherwise, string of pearls, string of hearts, they can handle direct sun at least for a few hours a day so i prefer west window south window and they will do okay in an east window too but they just will not be happy in a north window for long so i would make sure that they're getting a lot of bright light too all of these plants to keep them nice and lush and healthy i give foliage pro um, which is the fertilizer i use for 
100% of my house plants. It works so great and I absolutely love it. I will link it down below for you guys, of course. Um, but I use Foliage Pro and then I also have been adding um, Bug Hut Biologicals. So I use these three, the Enhancer, the Distressor, and the Booster. For these Biologicals, this is the Booster and this one promotes stronger root growth. And so that's really important with these string of plants because their roots are delicate. You wanna give them as much strength and hope as possible. So giving them a little boost is really helpful. I use the enhancer. This one is for the colors, like greener leaves, more vibrant um, and faster growth. So I love the enhancer for sure. And then the de-stressor, which is super helpful because it helps with temperature changes. So as we're going into winter, it helps a lot. If they are under some light stress from lower light levels, it will help with that as well. And it also helps if they're going through a drought, which in the winter, I do try to let things go dry a little bit longer. Um, so keep that in mind too. And I use this for all of my plants, not just my string ofs. So I love those products. Check them out if you haven't. So I put all of these together in a gallon with my Foliage Pro. So all of those go in together into my gallon pump sprayer. And this little thing right here, I mean, I guess you wouldn't have to get this specific one, um, but this is like my secret weapon when it comes to string of plants because when I water them, I water them deeply pretty much every, like whenever they're completely dried to the bottom. Because what happens a lot of times with string of plants is you'll they'll be in a pot like this and when you water, that's great, everything gets soaked, but then this top layer dries out sooner than the rest, which is normal. But for string of plants, their roots are so delicate and shallow. So as this top part dries out, if it's staying dry for too long, then you're gonna start to lose leaves. And I will also show you on this string of pearls, if I let it go dry too long, I will start to get, I'm not gonna be able to show you, little dried pearls on the ends right there. So that kind of happened right through here. It got dry, it went dry for way too long and I started to lose those there. So keeping that top inch or two damp, but not soaking is my secret. So what I will do is I will water them like normal and then as I start to feel this top inch or two get dry, I will take my pump sprayer and I will just mist the top until it's saturated about an inch down. So I don't make sure, like I don't wanna try and fill this whole pot and water this whole pot. It's really just that top inch. And so that's how I do that. And I will do that for my string of pearls. String of turtles is a little bit different just because it is so full. So when I have a very full pot like this, my trick for knowing when it's time to water that is I will use a wooden skewer or a old chopstick or something like that will work. Just make sure it's like a raw wood and not covered because you want it to be able to soak up water if there is any so that it can tell you if it's still damp. So I will just kind of stick this right down into the middle of the pot. Don't worry about hurting any roots. It's small enough, it's not gonna do anything. So I stick it all the way down till it hits the bottom of the pot. Leave it in there for you know a minute or two. I mean, even like 30 seconds is fine. But then you pull it out and if it comes out dry and no soil is sticking to it, then it's time for a deep water. And then in between times, I will just stick it down about an inch. And if it comes out dry there, then I will mist it. So that is how I do the full pots. And then the other ones, it's pretty easy to see when it needs to be watered. You just kind of stick your finger in there. But that is what I do for my string ofs to keep them happy, um, along with the fertilizer, good light, all those things. Now I want to talk about soil and pots. So ideally, because string ofs have shallow root systems, this is like my favorite type of pot, something that is squattier and wider. So it's wider than it is tall. So that means the roots can easily fill this whole area. It's going to be able to use all of the soil, all of the moisture. I also love terracotta for all of my string ofs. I need to start transferring more into terracotta pots. I actually probably could just find more of these exact pots and put these in because honestly, this pot is way too big for this string of hearts. I just haven't changed it yet. Um, so this pot I believe is too big, so I need to probably size down. I would rather it be like half this depth 
um, but it's been fine for now. And the reason it has been fine is because I use Soul Soils Houseplant Mix. So this soil is super chunky, but it does retain water. So you don't have to worry about overwatering because even though it retains that water, it still will let plenty of air pockets form down in there. And so the roots have access to oxygen as well as access to pulling water from the particles that hold on to it. So I love this stuff. I plant everything in it that I have and it works great. So I love the soil soils. Highly recommend that for all string of plants. Um, I just don't repot things right away. So like this string of turtles, I, it's still in its grower's pot. I have not repotted this since I got it. Um, so until it needs a repot, I'm not gonna do anything to it. But when it does need to be repotted, I'll be using soil soils for sure. One other thing I wanted to mention is if you guys do end up with some bare spots on your vine, so along these vines, you can find some bare areas. And if that happens to me, I use this on pretty much all my plants, but this is called cakey paste. And this stuff will, it's a mix of hormones and it will encourage your plant to sprout a new vine or whatever you put it on, it will encourage it to grow. So if you put it on a node where the root comes out, it will grow a new root. If you put it on a axillary bud, it will create new growth. So a new vine will emerge. So I love this stuff. You just place it right on the node or right above the node where that little bud is and it will create new growth. This stuff is magic in a bottle for sure. <laughs> I've used it on Syndapsis, Ficus, Hoya, String of Hearts. Um, what else? So many things. Oh, Philodendron. Um, and it has been successful on all of them. So highly recommend this. If you guys have not checked it out, I will put it down below. All right, so we talked about how I water things. Now for hanging pots, things like this, I also get asked how I water without water getting everywhere. And so I will sometimes just take these to the sink, but other times if I'm being too lazy, I've bought a pack. These come in a pack of five. They're hanging pot trays, like drip trays, and they just go on to your pots, hook onto your pots like that. Um, and then you can water like normal and it, it will drain into this and then you can just take it off and dump it. These work so well, I love them so much and I will even use them as just normal drip trays too. Like I'll just throw them underneath one of these like this and water it on the shelf just so that I just like that it's a much deeper tray than some others so I can really soak it and not have to worry about it overflowing even in the tray. So I love these too. So when it comes to watering, make sure that you are not letting those top few inches dry out for too long because that is when you're gonna to start to see a lot of root death. Now, I also don't recommend that you keep it soaking wet and so that's why I say don't water this completely just because the two inches up here are dry because then it's gonna just stay soaked down here. So that is why having good soil is really important but if you're not gonna switch it to a chunkier soil, then you need to start watering like this, like you soak these top two inches just when that gets dry and not soak the whole pot. So I hope that makes sense. If you guys have questions about that, just leave them in the comments and I can try to elaborate. But that is just how I have done it for the past few years with all of my string of plants. As that top inch or so gets dry, I will give it a little mist with my pump sprayer. Um, and then that just kind of keeps that top layer and those roots up there happy um, versus letting them go dry for so long and waiting for the whole pot to dry out. So I hope that's helpful. Give this video a like if you found it useful and I hope that you guys have a lot of success with your string of plants. If you ever need help or just have some questions, leave them in the comments. You can also follow me over on Instagram. That is where I do daily houseplant question and answer in stories. So you can always ask your plant questions over there too. But other than that, I hope you guys have a great rest of the day and I hope that you grow some big happy plants.